that uh, we will today, as well as Chairman of the Board of Supervisors, Luis Blancarte. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Buckley. Mr. Buckley, thank you. I have to look around and see who you're talking to. Uh, we uh, just heard California news. We just heard uh, news from CBS. The uh, COVID-19 pan pandemic is uh, continuing. And uh, Tony, we'll start off with you. What additional uh, measures have been taken in Imperial County addressing uh, the issue? So you're aware, I think we spoke a little bit about last week, we kicked off with the uh, face covering uh, order that was put out by Dr. Monday in the public health department last, last week. Uh, we've done a great deal of uh, social media discussions, uh, a lot of literature out about so, so how to even make a uh, face covering. We've done some demonstration videos by county staff and put a lot of uh, graphics out for both kids and, and adults. Uh, just showing how simple it could be to assist with flattening the curve. So that's probably the biggest thing that we did the last week that caught a lot of attention. And um, people are getting pretty fashionable with these things also and, and uh, kind of making a statement. And, but um, it, it, it's a tool to help push this in the right direction. Um, and uh, let's just keep that, that, that train moving in the right direction and, and get the assistance we need from our community. Okay, Mr. Flancarte. Um, there have been uh, several people that have brought up issues of concern among uh, county employees. How has uh, the county addressed those issues? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. You know, um, despite of what's going on, there's all these services that have to be provided uh, by the county to the community in order to uh, help those that are not working and being affected in other, other ways. Uh, over the past few days, uh, uh, both Tony uh, as well as uh, a couple other people and myself have visited numerous county buildings and we walked through them. Uh, and you know, one of the things that we've done is we have really reduced, uh, if you will, the census uh, during the day. Uh, whenever possible and the job permits it, uh, we've allowed uh, remote working. Uh, some jobs obviously do not permit it. If you're a firefighter, a deputy sheriff, or uh, you're working within the jail system, you physically have to be there. Uh, but in those areas where we are able to uh, uh, to thin out, if you will, uh, one of the things that we've done is we have really, uh, number one, when telecommuting is available and it is possible, uh, we've done so. Uh, second, we've gone to a... Uh, split schedule, if you will, where some employees come in early in the morning and leave about noon, one o'clock, and then uh, other employees come in uh, to uh, continue to do the work. Uh, right now, we've been maintaining uh, probably a 40, 45 percent census in our buildings, which means that about every 10 cubicles, only four, maybe five are occupied, are creating that, that distancing, that social distancing that we talk about. Um, as you know, we've also asked um, that everybody uh, wear some type of a mouth um, a cover or protection, and so our employees are doing that. And then throughout the facilities, we have uh, all kinds of wipes and hand sanitizers. Uh, some employees, you know, prefer certain brands, and they're bringing them from home. Uh, others are using what we are able to, uh, uh, to resource and provide for them. Uh, but so far, everybody seems to be rising to the occasion and uh, doing their part in keeping themselves safe. Okay, and uh, what do you see? And I, I know we can't, uh, it, it's a question that is not totally answerable, but what do you see coming down the road? Well, you know, I, I see the continued effort uh, in trying to keep uh, ourselves safe. Uh, and ourselves, I mean, not just me personally as a self, but my community, those around us. Um, you know, I, I, I see uh, uh, an increase in some of the need that's going to come for the, from the communities as uh, this gets stretched out. And so for right now, for example, right now, our human services department, um, which are social services, the area, 
Agency on Aging, Child Supportive Services, uh, be Behavioral Health, uh, uh, the people who are at Workforce Development, which are working with uh, all the unemployment claims, uh, veteran services. Um, you know, right now the, the, the inquiries from the community uh, for benefits from programs such as uh, CalFresh and CalWorks, Medi-Cal, uh, Covered California are just increasing uh, exponentially. I think uh, you saw some of the national numbers that are coming about unemployment claims in the millions by the week. Um, some of our adult services, uh, obviously we have a very large uh, number of at-home uh, people that require uh, help. We have roughly 5,000 plus uh, in-home supportive services workers that work with them. Um, you know, we have protective, child protective and adult protective services that are going on. Um, and you have all the emergency responders that are having to work. Uh, a couple days ago, Tony and I toured the uh, Betty Jo McNeese facility. Uh, you know, operations like that continue to work, are at more need than ever, uh, whether it's foster care or family maintenance. Um, you know, all these services uh, continue to increase. And, uh, you know, this is a, a time that I like to recognize all those employees that are going that rope and, and, and providing all those behind the scenes uh, services that the community really need as we continue to go through this. Okay, and, and Tony, let's, uh, let's get back. Um, I know it's not your department, but uh, you're, you're the man on top of the pyramid. Has the county been able to get the uh, supplies that they need? So just like everyone else across the world, you know, we're pushing for supplies. Uh, uh, at the Emergency Operations Center, there's a great host of people that have been very, uh, working very hard to obtain uh, the daily needed supplies. We're also being helping disperse to, you know, multiple medical clinics, uh, healthcare clinics that may need uh, additional supplies too, as far as respirators, gowns, and shields. So they're doing a tremendous job. Um, with our own staff at the county, uh, they've been our purchasing and procurement department is working diligently to find everything that we need. And uh, you know, just like the rest of the nation, the rest of the world, a lot of supplies are on back order. But I got to tell you, these people are putting in the ex get going the extra ten yards to search high and low for everything we need. We have a great deal of supplies coming in. Uh, I've been look watching that very closely because um, we want to try to maintain the. Uh, a good stockpile for ourselves um, as we move forward through this. Okay, let's uh, shift focus a little bit. Uh, a lot of information uh, on Imperial County. Not as much information coming from uh, just south of the border in Mexicali. Are you working with uh, the Mexicali government on this? Our public health department actually has a very strong liaison that spends a great deal of time dealing with uh, Mexicali on a regular basis. Um, I think we all have the same concern. We have a huge city to the south of us, and um, sometimes we don't realize it, but we do have to recognize it's a very large population. It's, uh, we share a common border, but the border doesn't have a barrier that prevents everything from coming across. It's something that has to be extreme. We have to uh, take that into consideration. But we are public health is in regular contact with them, uh, on, at, at least on a daily basis, uh, determining what's going on, how we can communicate better, what we need to do, how we can help facilitate any of their concerns, and vice versa. Okay, uh, Mr. Plancarte, Mr. Rojotas, anything else that uh, we should touch on? You know, I think uh, one thing that uh, this certain emergency has taken a different toll on than uh, previous emergencies. Um, you know, when you have a fire, your first responders are, are the heroes. Uh, when you have a law enforcement issue, you know, your, your, your law enforcement shines and, and comes through. The difference with this emergency is our new heroes are all of our first responders, but they're also our health and human services component. And um, I think it's a change for them but they need to be recognized. Uh, all these people, Mr. Plancarte, uh, discussed the um, 
all the health and human services component, the, the programs that still need to occur, and then people are still in dire need. And, and actually, they're, they're, they're in more need now than they were prior to this emergency. So you're seeing people step up in those Department of Social Services, Behavioral Health, Public Health, you know, our AAA office, and, and they're just, they're in a whole new avenue of life uh, and the response that they haven't been in before maybe. And uh, they're just all stepping up as part of the team. And uh, they're as much as a hero as uh, anybody else because someone is in a dire need and these people are stepping up and providing those services. And it's at a uh, time and more need than you know what they're used to, um, what the citizens, what our community needs. And uh, it's just a great collaboration of effort. And I can't applaud them enough for all the work that's being done in this community. Okay, gentlemen, we appreciate the visit, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you. For Thank you, sir. Here today. Take care. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Hey, let me call, let me call you back, man. Hey man, how's it going? Hi, so uh, I have this stain and I uh, heard you're the guy. Say no more. Valley Dry Cleaning has got you covered. There you go, man. Cool, man. Hey man, you got it out. What'd you guys do? Let's just say we've got a secret weapon. Thanks, man. <laughs>